Uh, next up, I'd like to invite uh, Erzhen if he is here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Erzhen is our last speaker. Well, yeah, I think we're following the agenda, right? Um, yeah, so Erzhen is the research engineer at Hashcloak. Um, and he's going to talk about FRI protocol and its proof. And if you are ready, are you able to share your screen? Uh, let me try. Your screen, but it said that host disabled participant. Oh, the host has to. CC. Yeah. Oh. So, I'm going to set. Or, Tim said he's, he would like to share his presentation slides. Uh, but he's not able right now because the host has to grant him. Right. Which which person? Okay. I'm sorry. I don't see the option. I see allowed to record local files. Uh, who needs to be? Oh, Arson. Arson. Okay, I gave. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay, great, yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the FRI protocol. It's used for building one of the efficient uh, zero knowledge arguments. And uh, like it's important because uh, like it deals with a very uh, important part uh, called the polynomial coding, and it proves that something is like the common value is a polynomial, and it can prove this efficiently. So uh, this will be my main subject. And below are, are my uh, like today's content. So I'll just first talk about the motivation uh, to apply to the efficient zero knowledge argument, and introduce about three common code and uh, how the proof the protocol is going to uh, be look like, and then introduce the FR protocol, and finally some analysis on the efficiency and counter. And this is uh, uh, this is uh, like the paper is called that three thousand. Uh, just FRI, like I, I think uh, Vitalik has uh, written this in his blog too. So maybe you can. Uh, search FRI protocol and ZK, and you'll find the paper. So, um, to have an efficient zero knowledge argument, let's see what uh, usually a zero knowledge argument uh, consists of. So, usually there will be some stages, like the prover first makes some commitment, and then the verifier choose random challenges and send them to the prover, and then the prover they commit some values and reveal them to the verifier so that the verifier can verify those values. And um, to make this uh, uh, argument, so if we want to reduce the communication cost, uh, so mainly the communication cost comes from what the prover sends because finally we may apply a reaction near platform. So we want to uh, reduce both the commitment size and the review size. So for commitment size, if we want to reduce them, we may use like uh, Merkle tree. Uh, so it will simply be some Merkle root. So this will be really small. But for the re revelation part, uh, this will depend on the algebraic structure of how we like reorganize uh, our statements and then uh, into a more encoded form and then uh, to allow the argument to work. So, and this, uh, one of the algebraic structures often used is to use polynomial encoding. So that uh, like, uh, if we're given many 
relations of product relations, we may form we may form them into polynomials and prove uh, equations on polynomials. So, like for example, if we have uh, four polynomials and we know that they have degree like less uh, no more than n, and like the prover want to prove a times b equals b times c as polynomial, and this can be efficiently proved uh, in the following way. So the prover first makes some commitments to a, b, c, and d at some points, and like here at kn many such points. Holes and the respective structure. Uh, the structure here is polynomial. So A, X, D, X, D, X, D, X are not actually polynomials of lower degree, but uh, uh, like we now we cannot verify yet because here the prover only makes commitments to the, like the evaluations of these polynomials independently. So uh, unless the verifier sees all of them, they, the verifier cannot verify that these values actually come from a polynomial of degree less than n. And this, polyno the, this polynomial structure is useful. So here I'm going to talk about how this polynomial structure is useful. So like, for example, if the prover commits to Kn position, and then the verifier actually only need to uh, add a random position and ask the prover to open to A, B, C, D at that position. And if the verifier checks that a y d y equals d y d y, he can, uh, with high confidence, with high confidence, uh, believe that the prover actually has the a b c and d uh, satisfying a b x equals b x b x, and that is because uh, they are polynomials of degree less than n. So a x d x and b x d x should have degree less than 2n. And we know from like Lagrange interpolation that uh, such two polynomials can agree at the most 2n points. Because if more, if they agree at more points, even that they are polynomials, they will be identical. So now that there are only 2n points out of the can, and most 2n points out of the can points that will likely uh, not detect that this equation is not equal. So uh, like with probability, uh, only two over k, uh, the verification will fail to find out that this equation is not satisfied. And this is like uh, many zero arguments made use of this kind of encoding so that uh, this check will be very efficient. So you just at one point and you can check like n points. Like or originally maybe you have to check many points that A, B equals C, D, but now you make them into polynomials and you only uh, try a random position and then you can uh, believe that uh, this equation is followed, is satisfied with high probability. But um, for the example to hold uh, these are the prerequisites so that uh, we need A, B, C, and D are polynomials of degree less than, uh, no more than N, and the prover commits to uh, like many points of evaluation of these polynomials. Uh, so the question is how can we ensure that these committed values actually come from polynomials? Like unless you uh, get enough uh, revelations of these positions, you are uh, you seem unlikely to know that they are polynomial. So the FRI, FRI protocol wants to solve this problem. So uh, now uh, I give some notation. And so first, let S be a field. So there's uh, plus minus concentration and quotient you can use, and L is the subset. And the resolvement code on L uh, using L and P 
L is the domain. Like this is a set of or not a set of function that uh, maps from L to F, and they are actually polynomials of degree uh, less than P L, uh, P times size of L. So that this is like among all sets of functions from L to F, the R F the resulting code consists of like polynomials of low degree relatively low degree. And uh, actually, uh, what we want is that we make commitments to a function, and then we want to convince the verifier that actually the function is inside the resound code. And um, so to, to prove this um, efficiently, the following will be useful. So. Uh, like if we start from a function and the function has domain L0 and we want to uh, have an algebraic structure on the domain L0. So we write it as a subgroup generated by G and then we define L1 equals uh, the subgroup generated by G squared so that the size will be half and then so on. So L2 equals G to the fourth and and so on. So we have a like a chain of domains, and the size will be half and half and half, and they are related together. And we also have a notation that uh, let y plus and y minus equals the square root of one. Okay. So uh, to prove that uh, a given committed function that uh, it is inside the resulting code, the strategy is as follows. So if we start from F0 and we have domain L0, so we want to show that F0 is in the resulting code. And how we're doing this efficiently. Uh, so now we can let the verifier make some challenge. And then the prover will, after receiving the challenge, will calculate another function f1 but the domain size half in the size of f0 so that uh, uh, the domain of f1 is l1 and then do this again and again so after each round the, the verifier will send a new challenge and the prover will send another function and uh, with domain half again so like after uh, log number of rounds uh, the final function will have like constant degree or small degree. And at this point, uh, like we have a, like some kind of reduction and we want that the, so we want that from fi to fi plus one, this, transform, this transformation will pre uh, preserve the co-membership. So if fi is in the resounding code, we hope, we wish that fi plus one is also in the resound code and vice versa. If this is the case, then we can have a reduction from the original function to the final function. And then the final function, we just simply give all the coefficients and check them. So, uh, so actually the communication pattern, let me clarify more. So it consists of multiple rounds. And then, and first for each round, the verifier will choose a random challenge. And after that, the prover will provide a function and provide it as an oracle. So it has, it will evaluate the function at all the points of its domain and then make a Merkle loop, Merkle tree loop and send it to the verifier. And yeah, so this is uh, what I meant by providing a function. So after the prover provide a function, the verifier cannot uh, cannot see the evaluation, but later it can ask the prover to review the uh, evaluation of the function. And what this uh, protocol wants to guarantee is that, uh, like the security guarantee is that, uh, like for the original function, only a few evaluations can be reviewed. Otherwise, uh, uh, we cannot like support the zero knowledge proof part that we want. 
and the other part is that the soundness error, uh, it actually depends on how the uh, starting function is close to one of the resolving codes. So if like the function is uh, a polynomial, like a resolving code, but with one point moved away, then actually we can hardly, uh, like the protocol can hardly, hardly find out that this function is not in the resolving code. So, but this, given this, but uh, as uh, as the function is further away from the resolving code, then uh, like the protocol can catch catch out that uh, this function is not inside the resolving code. So the further the function is from the resolving code, uh, the more chance that it will get caught. So um, the reason uh, the FRI protocol for C as follows. Like the FRI means fast resolvement interactive growth proximity. So the proximity part means uh, that the previous part I explained that uh, if it is close, then the soundness error may be small, but when it's far, the soundness error is large, and the soundness is is better. And uh, and we, uh, like I said, we we want to have a transformation between each round that uh, for, from F to F star, we should preserve the co-membership property. So this is how the FR protocol achieves it. So if Fx is something in the resolving code, so it, it can be written as a polynomial of relatively low degree, and we split the polynomial into uh, odd degree and even uh, even degree part and take the x out of the odd degree then we can write fx like x times uh, a polynomial uh, and inside is x squared and plus some polynomial inside x squared and then we can define uh, this dxf so after one x after some x is given, this cxf, cxf is another function, and this function will have, like this function is simply uh, you replace the x squared by y. So this function is a function in y, and y will take value in g squared because y is in fact a square, and we know that uh, like in discuss. In the subgroup general G, uh, like x squared will always have two roots, right? So, uh, like x and minus x will map to the same thing, is x squared to, to g squared. So that uh, uh, cxf, it will have the domain being half. And uh, and its degree is also half because originally, uh, like, because we have replaced x squared part by y, so now that uh, if the original degree is like two n, now it will be n because x squared will all be uh, replaced by y. So degree in y will be also half. So that uh, the new function cxf it is also in the new Riemann code. So we have the like the positive way from left to right, but we have not yet the right to left part, and that will be like a, uh, a more uh, complicated analysis. Okay, but uh, what I've just described the CXF, we have to start from a resolving code. So we want that uh, the CXF can uh, be calculated irrespective of whether F is inside the resolving code or not. So alternatively, we can uh, have the following observation. So if we look at f y plus, uh, y plus is uh, a square root of y, and we will see that it will be uh, like this two equation. Uh, yeah, and uh, 
we, we can observe that Cx and Fy and Fy plus and Fy minus, they share the F1 Y part and F0 Y part. So that actually they are like uh, on the same line. There are three points on the same line. So we can calculate Cx Fy from Fy plus and Fy minus uh, using like the line, uh, we just calculate the line and then calculate that uh, corresponding to X, what is the point. So we can using Fy plus one, Fy minus, and their evaluation and calculate Cx Fy. Yeah, so uh, this calculation works for all functions. So now for the FR protocol, we can uh, apply this the, the above transformation uh, over and over so that initially the prover has F0. And in, in, the first, uh, in the first stage for the first round, uh, the prover will send F0 as an oracle and then the verifier choose a random element. And next the prover will calculate uh, C X zero F zero as its next oracle and send it to the verifier, and then the verifier sends an error status, and then again, again, again. So the honest verifier will actually calculate S I from C X I minus one and F minus one. It will use this, this transformation to calculate. And finally, uh, the last in the last round, uh, the function will be of constant degree, so it will it can just send all the uh, coefficients. And so for the first stage, it is like the goal is to reduce the origi original oracle to another oracle that is of small domain. And for the second stage, it is to check that between each reduction, they are consistent. So we will expect that uh, because the honest prover will set the next uh, function according to the transformation and the previous function. So uh, in the second stage, the verifier will, uh, for every uh, adjacent or code, it will check that they are, if this is actually hold by uh, choosing a random place, a random point. So for random y in this domain, uh, the prover will calculate uh, the two roots, and then the prover reveals uh, these three values. And because uh, according to uh, like reveal them, and after that the verifier will check that if they determine correctly, and then using f i y plus and f i y minus, you can calculate c x i f i y y and see that if if it is uh, equal. And yeah, and because uh, like we start from random y in in this domain, so uh, like our y plus we used in the previous domain too. So like this is the consistent check, consistent to check part. So combining two part, these two parts, we can easily see that if the original f zero is actually a cohort then it will pass uh, it will pass this test but then we uh, we later will uh, slightly analyze, analyze what if uh, the original episode is not a cover uh, let me see if um, then so uh, let me uh, let we let us analyze the efficiency. So if the original function has domain L zero and its size is n, so that the original function is has n dom uh, n elements as its domain, then the round will be log logarithmic in n. And the total number of common values will be uh, like the domain of each function. So adding up, like you add n and and n 
uh, over 2 and n over 4 and so on. You will get O n. And number of challenges and your values will be constant for this round, so it will be log n. So, so like, uh, uh, like uh, after we use like the Diagonal transform, uh, it will have uh, only the reveal value is important, so it is only log n. Like so, we can prove that uh, the resounding code coverts with only log n reveal value, <coughs> and the prover complexity and verified complexity is also low because the prover only wants to calculate. Uh, all those function evaluation and like this is n log n using FFT and for the verifier it would like make the uh, challenges and consistency consistency check and these are also efficient so it'll be log n. Okay, so next uh, we'll slightly analyze uh, the soundness and there's here we will have more notation so uh, since uh, since the transformation C is calculated using y plus and y minus, we will treat this set as a block. So, like for each domain, like L0, it will have many blocks. Each block will have two elements. And these two elements will like shrink into one element in the next round. And we will define like the blockwise distance and hemming weight, a hemming distance of two functions. So, uh, like the blockwise distance for two functions is to see the proportion of blocks where they, the two functions are not identical. And the hemming distance is the proportion of elements. So this is slightly different. And so these are small d and h. And the big d is uh, like the union of all blocks where f and g are not identical. Okay, these are some uh, small notations. And next, this is the, uh, uh, for a function f, we want to quantify how close it is to a resonant code. So uh, it, this, uh, like the f, the closest distance from f to a cohort will be written as t. So this is quantifying the proximity of f. Uh, so, like we said, uh, as uh, t grows, the soundness should the soundness error should be t reduced also. And here we also see because we have a reduction, so we want to see that when the reduction will like uh, be a bad be a bad uh, reduction. So the bad reduction means that. Uh, uh, the set of x because the reduction you have what you want to have an x there this c x f and the um, the bad so the bad set is that the set of x such that uh, so originally we uh, the the blockwise distance of f to big f the big f means the closest code to f uh, if they originally have this distance it means that uh, for blockwise, uh, when you see them, view them blockwise, uh, like uh, D of them are different, the proportion D of them are different. And we wish that uh, after we do the transformation, so that two, uh, for each block, the two points will shrink as one point. And after we shrink them, the proportion of the different parts are also the same. And if this is not true, and we call such x a bad x, so we want to like avoid these bad x, so that uh, our reduction is uh, will not produce errors. And now we can uh, like uh, there's a important fact that uh, the set of bad x is relatively small, so. If our original field size is large enough, and our L will be like some, like our LR, the size of L, the domain will be like polynomial n, and the field size will be like exponential n, so that um, this property is actually uh, very low. And we want to we uh, so we want to say that uh, the property.
really like the active cat more than this this uh, number. So why is it so? So let's think if uh, the original if f if small f and big f uh, uh, if they are identical on some block, then their transformation will always be equal, right? Because the transformation only depends on the uh, the evaluation and these points. So the because they are identical, so the transformation will always be equal. After the transformation, these values will be equal. So like two two blocks and they have equal values. Then after they they shrink, they will have equal values. So this is uh, nothing. But if like these two functions are not equal on this on the same block, then after they shrink, uh, like what x will cause them to shrink to different values? Then we can see that uh, because they are not identical, so they actually correspond to different lines. So as I said before, like uh, we can view the transformation as uh, to calculate uh, your f evaluating at y plus and y minus, and then uh, you you calculate the line, and then uh, calculate uh, the uh, the position where the x coordinate is x, right? So it's actually if the the in the function on the block is different, they actually correspond to different lines, and so uh, the evaluation will be equal for at most one position, right? It cannot be two positions because if two x will make them equal, that means that they are the same line. So we can get that uh, there are less than two such x will uh, like make the reduction uh, errorless. So in total, how many bad x will there be for each block? There are, and there are less than two, and the number of blocks is the number of elements of the domain uh, divided by two. So when you times together, it is the number of elements of this domain. So we finally know that our reduction, uh, in this sense, the reduction is uh, quite sound because uh, when you shrink, you will get a loss of security for at most uh, f uh, li quotient by f. Uh, so, uh, like, if we're going to have a more uh, complete proof, we will then uh, like start from the preclude the unlikely case that some um, x is bad and then see how uh, uh, the consistency check will catch uh, catch if the original function is not close to not in response to okay. uh, so let me just uh, explain for the good chain part. So what I mean by good chain is that if now consider a prover, it is not a, an honest prover, maybe a, like just someone acting as a prover, and he will proceed many rounds with the verifier, and then every round he will uh, like use F0, F1, F2, and so on to FK as his oracle. And if these uh, function are every of these functions are actually close to uh, something in the response code. So, like small f zero is close to big f zero, and so on. And then, if uh, the transformation applying on f zero is f one, and so on, then we call this a good chain. So, this means that, like, the prover is using a function that is close to uh, a reason code and then just like slightly modifying every function a little bit. And in this case, we will claim that uh, if initially uh, for the, if, uh, if the, in the consistency, consistency check, it will fail, that it will reject, be rejected. So, the reason, uh, so the reason is that uh, if 
the confusion check is checked, takes the block that is that these two functions are not equal, then we can find uh like I mean if for the F zero and a big F zero, there is some block that is inconsistent and that is picked as a challenge, then we can find among F0 to Fk which one is the last one. So the last index that uh, the challenge y uh, is inside the inside a block that is distant. Uh, that that Fj and Fj are distant. Then so this since this is the last one and and uh, an important thing to note is that because finally uh, the prover will provide the function uh, in all of its coefficients to check that it's low degree. So in the final point, F Fk, we can ensure that uh, the Fk actually is equal to, is, is inside the result code. Because we uh, start from F0 and we do many reductions and finally check if Fk is and give the coefficient of fk and see that it is in the return code. So actually, in the final point, we can make sure it is uh, like these two are identical. So when we pick the last one, we will not pick the final one. Um, here is a typo. The j is more than k. Okay. So if we pick the final one, then we have two things. So the first thing is that we know that the current y. Uh, is inside a block that f and f is distant. And the next y, what we call y star, is inside uh, a place that f star and f star are equal. So for the second point, we can see that since they are equal, uh, uh, they are equal on the whole block, then we will have to say uh, their evaluations are equal. For the first, for the first part, since uh, the y is in a block where these two functions are not identical, and that we have precluded those x that is bad. So, uh, so uh, after we apply the transformation on f and f, like after we shrink them, uh, the they will be the, the value will be distant because originally they are uh, blocks that are not. They are evaluation of blocks that are not identical, and we preclude those bad ones. So, so these are different. And uh, since uh, we assume that uh, the big F, they like the big F actually is following the uh, honest transformation. So we know that this is equal. So combining first the first point, the second point, we will find out that. Uh, uh, CXF and F star uh, will not be equal on the Y star on the point Y star. So it means that uh, in the consistent check, uh, it will be get, it will get caught by the third part. So uh, this means that uh, like prob uh, the reject probability is at least uh, the size the portion of this set, and this is. Uh, the block wise distance from S0 to resonant code. And like uh, for the other case, so uh, here we assume that all of them are good chain. But if this is not case, then we can find that uh, where does this assumption break? So if the assumption break at some point, so uh, this means that uh, uh, well, uh, if f, the big F does not transform to big F star, for that the small f and big F are far away. And we find the last place where this holds. And after this place, all of them are good chain. So my point, the dot 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 means good chain. So we see how like uh, we, we see these two cases. And actually for these two cases, uh, we, we know we will have a property that uh, the transformation of F <coughs> is far from uh, big F star. Yeah, 
type so I have type for here. So uh, then we can like if we have this, we can again see that uh, the uh, the consistent check will uh, catch these these uh, cases. So if the Hamming distance is actually large enough, then it can the, the protocol can catch this because it will reject if Y star is in the distinct is is in some is in one of the distinct blocks uh, because uh, this is the previous one we have proof. So given that the uh, after the breaking of the previous assumption, the F star dot 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 to F K these are good chain. So we have the first box if that Y star if Y star is in this D F star F star it will reject. And also uh, by the consistent check we know that if dx at y star is not equal to x star y star, it will reject. Uh, this is directly reject. And these two cases actually imply that, uh, like for the first case, um, this means that f star and big f star, they are not identical. So this is different. And, and uh, so we also combine these two uh, cases. And this will include the case that uh, dxf y star is not equal to big F y star. Because if uh, this is the case, then one of them must be not equal to uh, small f star y star. Yeah. So the reject case will uh, include the case that uh, your y star is uh, selected from a point where dxf is not equal to big F. And this probability is at least the hemi distance. So this is at least some constant. So uh, like the soundness analysis will, like the main three points will be, uh, first we will see that where the reduction, uh, like the, prob the probability that the reduction is not a good reduction. And then we will like, uh, See that uh, uh, if everything is close, it's good. And then what we will have, and then the batching case is to uh, like use the result which we have obtained from good chain case and add something to it. So finally, and we can see that for all cases, if the uh, if the original uh, distance t is if the original distance from F0 to this on code is far, then uh, the protocol will catch this, this, uh, this error. Yeah. So uh, that's about today, my uh, presentation. Any questions from Oscar? No specific questions from my part. Uh, yeah, uh, seems to any Anything questions? Else? Yeah. Uh, is the protocol non-interactive or interactive? Oh, so originally we'll design it as an interactive one, uh, but we can observe that uh, they can use the fiat transform to make it non-interactive. Uh, so it, originally it's an interactive oracle proof, uh, but we see that verifier choose random challenges and we just use uh, like cache of the previous transcript as the grand challenge, and we can make it non-interactive, but it's easier to describe in the interactive setting. I see, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jian Han 
or anyone else who has questions for Arten, now is a good time to ask. Is there a, something like a specific uh, thing you're looking into uh, for for using this this uh, building block? Uh, so for many uh, interactive or proof based neural protocols, so the code is IoT based protocols like Aurora and Spectral. Uh, they use extensive use of this FI protocol. And yeah, so I think. Uh, it will be useful to look at how this protocol is look like and how why it is sound. So in this kind of uh, zero knot proof, they only use make use of Merkle Merkle tree, so hash functions as their security assumption and no other thing else. And uh, so it is like a transparent one and use of only use hash because it's lightweight. So it has applications to like uh, good feature zero proof. Uh, 